Okay, uh, last section in chapter 1 to start algebra 2. We are in solving absolute value equations and inequalities. So, taking a look here. Um, it's the same rule whether we're talking about absolute value equations or inequalities. Here's how you do an absolute value problem. First, keep in mind absolute value. It needs to be greater than, or it's always going to be greater than or equal to 0, whatever's inside, whatever your answer is going to be. Okay, so here's what this means you need to do when you're solving the problems. Very simply put, you write down exactly what you have without the absolute value sign. Okay, there you go. But there's a catch. Whenever you have inequalities, you also need to write down another equation. Exactly what you have, but you flip the sign and you make that a negative. So, those are your two equations to solve. So I would add 3 to both sides, so I get x is greater than 7. I would add 3 to both sides, and I get x is less than negative 1. So, when we go to graph our answer, here's negative 1. That's saying I put an open hole at negative 1, and I shade down this way, right, because the arrow is pointing in that direction. Number seven, put an open hole because it's greater than, and the arrow is pointing in that direction. So there is your answer. Next problem, once again, remember the rules. You write down exactly what you have without the absolute value sign. Then you write down exactly what you have, and you flip the sign, and you make it negative. So I subtract four on both sides get x is greater than or equal to negative 2. I subtract 4 on both sides, I get x is less than or equal to negative 6. So when I go to graph this, negative 6 is the lowest one, so I always start with the lowest one. I'll put a closed dot because it's less than or equal to, and the arrow is pointing in that direction, so I shade everything this way. I have a negative 2 closed dot because that's greater than or equal to and that's like an arrow pointing in that direction, so I shade everything that way. All right, x plus 7. Write down exactly what you have is less than 9. Then you write down exactly what you have. You flip the sign, and you make it negative. So I subtract 7 on both sides to get x is less than 2. I subtract 7 on both sides to get x is greater than negative 16. So, once again, when we go to do this, graph the lowest point first. Negative 16. It is a greater than sign, so I put an open hole, and I shade everything in that direction. Why? Because greater than points that way. I have a 2. That's an open hole. And that is going in this direction. So I shade everything this way. Well, wait a second. They're both meeting in the center. What does that mean? That means, like before, when I called those in the last section sandwich problems, that's what this is, like in inequalities. So how can I combine these two together to write the same thing all in once? You write them like a sandwich, from least to greatest. And there's your answer. And I know this because it's in between, so that's how I know to write that answer that way. Taking a look at this one, x plus 4 less than or equal to 6. I write down exactly what I have, but without the absolute value. Then you write down exactly what you have, but you flip the sign and you make it negative. So, I would subtract 4 on both sides, and so I get x is less than or equal to 2. I subtract 4 on both sides, and I get x is greater than or equal to negative 10. So, just like before, negative 10 is down here. It's a closed hole. Right, closed hole, and it's going in that direction, so I shade this way. Positive 2, it's a closed hole, and that's an arrow pointing in that direction. And whoa, 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 notice how they meet in the center as well, which means this is another sandwich problem. So since it's a sandwich problem, that means when I rewrite this, I go from low to high. And they have lines underneath because those do as well. And that is your answer. All right, these problems are solved the same way. There's just an extra step in them. There's that. And 
flip the sign, make it negative. Nothing changes. I add 2 to both sides. So I get 3x is less than or equal to 7. Divide by 3 on both sides. I get x is less than or equal to 7 thirds. Over here, I add 2 to both sides to get 3x is greater than or equal to negative 3. I divide by 3 on both sides. I get x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So, go low first, negative 1. And I would shade this way because it's pointing in that direction, right? Pew. Um, 7 thirds. Don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's a positive. It's up here. And I know that that goes down in that direction. So, negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 7 thirds because it is a sandwich problem. This is your answer. Um, next one, 2x minus 3. I write down exactly what I have is less than 5, and then I write down exactly what I have, but I flip the sign and I make it negative. So I add 3 to both sides. 2x is less than or equal to 8. Divide by 2, so I get x is less than or equal to 4. Over here, I add 3 to both sides, so I get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and I divide by 2 on both sides, I get x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So when I go to graph these, negative 1, closed dot, shaded that direction. 4, closed dot, shaded that direction. Another sandwich problem. So it's a negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4 because you go low to high. Remember, you write the lowest one to the highest one. 2x minus 5 is greater than 1. Remember, you write down exactly what you have, and then you write down exactly what you have, but you make it negative and you flip the sign. So I add 5 to both sides on this one to get 2x is greater than 6. Divide by 2, and I get x is greater than 3. Over here, I add 5 to both sides. I get 2x is less than 4. Divide by 2, I get x is less than 2. So the lowest one I have is 2. There it is. 2, but open hole, and it's pointing in that direction, so I shade everything this way. A 3, open hole, shade everything that way because it's an arrow pointing that way. So if you have any other further questions or concerns on solving absolute value equations or inequalities, please let me know.